What is up boys welcome back to my channel today we are going to see what mma in the summer olympics would look like using ufc4 mma has never been accepted into the summer olympics but with olympic viewership and ratings at an all-time low and with mma in general being the fastest growing sport of the century we might actually see this added to the olympics in our lifetime i understand there are a long list of reasons why it would be difficult to make this happen but it is definitely possible and i will give you a further explanation on how i would plan it out in the description of this video now since this is the first attempt on the entire internet to see how MMA would work in the Olympics. I have nothing to base the format on. However, I was able to take some ideas from similar sports in the Olympics, such as judo, wrestling, and boxing. So first of all, a country will only be allowed to send one athlete per weight class. A fighter will, of course, only be able to represent one country for the entire Olympics, but they will also only be allowed to participate in one weight class. So no, John Jones will not be in light heavyweight and heavyweight. How the format will work is we will have at the maximum eight fighters in a weight class in a single elimination tournament. The winner of each tournament will automatically win gold. The loser of the finals will win silver. And realistically, the semifinal losers would both win bronze, but I'll be having these semifinal losers go head to head for a bronze medal. The medal rankings will be based on the most agreed upon Olympic ranking system, which is ranking the countries by gold medals won, then using silver and bronze medals as tiebreakers. Just like all the other similar Olympic sports, the tournament seating will be done at random, but also based on judo, I will avoid putting the favorites against each other in the first round. So what I did is I took the four highest ranking fighters in each weight class, seated them in order, then the remaining fighters were seated at random. Every fight in this video will be controlled by the AI on pro difficulty for three five minute rounds, except the gold medal fights will be five five minute rounds. You'll notice that some of these fighters were born in different countries than they are representing, but to make this video possible, I commonly had to look up the fighters ethnic backgrounds to see what other countries they could represent. I would always take the best fighter in the game and prioritize them fighting for their birthplace country, but about 25% or so of these fighters will be representing countries based on their ethnicity or in the countries they lived in. I tried my best to always take the top eight fighters in each division, but there are a few exceptions because I wanted to make the final medal count more competitive. So I replaced some fighters that would be the only person representing their country in the Olympics with solid fighters from more represented countries. Starting with the female fighters, my options were pretty limited, but I was able to pull eight fighters from each weight class. Straw weight and fly weight are pretty standard, but the bantamweight division is a bit of a mess. I took Amanda Nunez out of retirement to represent Brazil. That also meant I gave USA Juliana Pena, which then led me to pull Ronda Rousey out of the WWE to represent her grandparents' country of Venezuela. The lowest amount of fighters I could get together is in the men's flyweight division with six. To be fair though, it is very competitive. Bantamweight has Aljamain Sterling representing Jamaica. I have Sean O'Malley representing Ireland. I would have liked to keep him in the USA, but I had to give the USA to Henry Cejudo, considering he won a gold medal for USA in in the 2008 Olympics. Featherweight is pretty cut and dry, but I included Conor McGregor and Jose Aldo for clout purposes. Lightweight is always competitive. Justin Gaethje will be representing Mexico, and Poirier will be representing the United States. Welterweight is very solid. I have Bilal Muhammad representing Palestine. It's just too bad I couldn't find a Jewish UFC fighter in this game. That could have been a very intense matchup. Middleweight looks as you'd expect, except Alex Pereira will have to represent Brazil in this weight class because the game doesn't have a 205 version of him. Jamal Hill has the USA well covered in the light heavyweight division, which leaves John Jones in the heavyweight division with the big boys. All in all, we have 86 fighters with 31 countries being represented. USA and Brazil are the only countries with a fighter in all 11 weight classes. After that, we have Mexico with eight, Australia with six, then Russia and the UK each have five. Russia is definitely good enough to have more fighters in this, but A, the UFC is never in a rush to put their fighters in the game, and B, the Dagestanis don't touch girls. We're going to start with the ladies going from strawweight to bantamweight. Then we will switch over to the flyweight men's division and work all the way up to the heavyweights. Call me a traitor, but up first in the strawweight division, we have my favorite woman fighter in the UFC, Zhang Wei Li from China, taking on Puerto Rico's Tisha Torres. Puerto Rico has two fighters in the Olympics, but this is not their best opportunity to win a medal. Wei Li tore Torres apart for 15 minutes straight and won by a unanimous 30 to 27 decision. Fighting Wei Li in the semifinals will either be Poland's Carolina or Brazil's Andrade. This was looking like a more competitive fight, but in the second round, Andrade was able to land a stunning strike and takedown. Carolina fought hard to get back to her feet, but after a few more seconds of standing up, she was unconscious. On the other side of the bracket, we have USA's Rose Nama Nunez fighting Thailand's one and only fighter, Michelle Watterson. This fight could sell a ton of tickets for reasons other than their fighting skills, but within the first round, Rose gave Watterson a free hysterectomy. Watterson tried repaying the favor in the second, but Rose was able to score an easy takedown and ended up winning the fight soon after with an armbar. For our last 
last first round fight, we have Mexico's Esparza taking on the UK's Calderwood. This is a classic matchup of striker versus grappler, and Calderwood was coming up on a knockout within the first round. Esparza learned her lesson after that, so she landed a takedown quickly in the second round and finished Calderwood with a north-south choke, which sets up one of the least anticipated rematches possible. I, I started like zoning out like halfway through it, so well, I don't think anybody's clamoring for that rematch. Uh... Our first semifinal fight is Wei Li versus Andrade. These two started scrapping from the beginning of the fight, but Andrade got too comfortable with her chin placement, so Wei Li had her take a seat. Wei Li was kind enough to let her back up, but her uppercut continued to dominate this fight. Andrade was looking out of this fight, but with her back to the wall, she responds with an uppercut knockdown of her own. And just when it's looking like we have a competitive fight on our hands, Wei Li drops Andrade with the power of 100 dragons. Poor Andrade just had a runescape death in front of the entire world. She won't be making the finals, but she will still have the chance to win bronze against the loser of this next fight. Esparza vs. Nama Yunez lives up to the hype once again. They did an MMA Olympics first by being stood up after not doing enough on the ground. The rest of the fight was just a wrestling match. I'm pretty sure they didn't land a single significant strike in the entire 15 minutes. But Rose does get her revenge. She wins by a very boring 29 to 28 decision. Next up is the bronze medal fight between Brazil's Andrade and Mexico's Esparza. Esparza might be one of the most boring fighters in this game, but that wasn't going to stop her from fighting her fight. She landed a takedown in the second round. Then Andrade had the bright idea of not only giving Esparza her back, but also more specifically the back of her head. Miss a single grappling practice during this training camp and Here's your evidence. Outstanding move. Unbelievable! In the gold medal fight, we will have a rematch of the rematch between China's Wei Li and the USA's Nama Yunez. I'm about as American as it gets, but I would love to see Wei Li standing over a seizing Rose Nama Yunez body within the next five minutes. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but we did get a competitive first round with Wei Li landing the first stunning strike of the fight. In the second, we start to see some wrestling with a Wei Li takedown and Rose reversal, but still, Wei Li ended up doing the damage on the ground. Wei Li then had a dominant third round round on the feet and Rose is looking out of this fight if she can't finish Wei Li within the next two rounds. Rose does a nice job headhunting in the fourth round and even scores her first knockdown of the fight but Wei Li is another breed. She gets up and starts swinging away midway through her concussion. The momentum entirely shifts and it's looking like Wei Li is going to win another round but within the last 30 seconds Rose stuns and drops Wei Li and might have stolen back the round. Wei Li opens up the fifth and final round by stunning Rose with a spinning heel kick but the thug is still breathing. She comes back with a flurry of punches, drops Wei Li, and retains ground control for the rest of the fight. Somehow, we have a split decision, and the first gold medal is going to Rose Nama Yunez of the United States. I understand her winning rounds four and five. She definitely lost round one and three, but I think they gave her round two for having four more significant strikes. Absolute horseshit. China was robbed. For the women's flyweight division, we have Mexico and Brazil going head to head again for the first fight of the tournament. Mexico has the champ Grasso, but Brazil has a solid challenger in Santos. Santos landed a takedown early in round one and was so close to winning the fight with two separate arm bars. But in rounds two and three, Grasso kept the fight on the feet and made short work of Santos and won this fight by unanimous decision. That was not a great showing for the champ, but Mexico is once again in the semifinals. Fighting her in the next round will either be the UK's Meatball or the USA's Blanchfield. Blanchfield Field is the higher ranked fighter, but it didn't seem like it in this one. Molly beat her like one of Neil Magny's kids and might have taken it too far considering her knockout put Blanchfield's arm through her spine. Up next, we have Francis Fior taking on Canada's one and only Davis. This was another fight that wasn't close. Fior just ragged all Davis for the entire fight and won by submission with 43 seconds left in the third round. The last fight of the first round is honestly unfair for both of these fighters. In hindsight, Poland's Ioana should have been a four seed because this deserved to be a gold medal fight. Shevchenko won the first round between her work in the clinch and her takedowns. Ioana rebounded in the second round with a stun and knockdown, but immediately after getting up, Shevchenko damaged Ioana's leg. She then stunned Ioana with a counterhook, walked her down, and knocked her down with a head kick. Round three was all Ioana, and she probably could have won this fight by knockout with 20 seconds left in the fight if she didn't follow up on a knockdown with a calf kick. But we go to a decision, Shevchenko advances, and Poland is now 0-2 after two tough matchups. First up in the semifinals, we have Grasso versus the 
$35 foot long meatball marinara sub eat fresh. Grosso turned out to be a real quiz no for Molly. This was pretty much a stand and bang fight the whole way, but Grosso landed too many shots on her Jimmy Johns, and by the end, she was Shalotsky. For the other semifinal fight, we have Francis Fior taking on Kyrgyzstan Shevchenko. Shevchenko won the first round with a stunning head kick. She tried playing it safe in the second round with a takedown, but Fior stuffed it and threw Shevchenko to the ground. Shevchenko then leaned into a head kick knockdown and was reversed on her takedown. With what seems like an even fight, Fior imposed her will in the third round with a takedown and some solid ground and pound. It looks like Fior deserves the decision, but never mind. Somehow they gave the third round to Shevchenko after Fior had more total strikes, takedowns, and ground control time. Makes sense. The top two ranked fighters will meet in the gold medal fight, but up first we have Fior of France versus Molly of the UK for bronze. And once again, Fior was looking like the best fighter in this division after dominating the first two rounds. Out of nowhere, Molly morphed into Francis Ngannou and scored back-to-back -back knockdowns. She went for the ground control on the second one, but after getting back up, Fior landed a body shot and uppercut that knocked her out. And France will be winning their first medal with a bronze. And for the gold medal fight, we have Mexico's Grasso versus Kyrgyzstan Shevchenko. Shevchenko looked like the much better fighter in round one after mounting Grasso for the majority of the round. In round two, they decided to test each other's chins by going back and forth with spinning head kicks, but the rest of the fight was not a back and forth. Valentina Shevchenko is the only five-star fighter in this weight class, but she could have fooled me. Grasso kept the fight on the feet and dominated until the fourth round when she knocked out Shevchenko with a final head kick. She gives Mexico their first gold medal, but their second overall, so they are now in first place. Kyrgyzstan ties China with a silver and France is all alone with a bronze. Next up is the final women's bracket, the bantamweight division. Up first is the by far favorite from Brazil, Amanda Nunez. First, the only six footer without a penis in UFC history, Australia's Megan Anderson. Speaking of, I really wish we allowed heavier women weight classes in the UFC. There are dozens of tall, heavy, and quote unquote underpaid women in the WNBA that really should be in the fighting business. I might actually buy a pay-per-view if I could see six foot eight Liz Cambridge fight a female Derek Lewis. Or if the war criminal pulls a Jake Paul, everyone pays to see her get knocked out, but she's actually fighting with the longest wingspan in UFC history. I just think there's a little untapped potential there. Anyway, Megan Anderson put up a good fight, but she was fighting Amanda Nunez. Next up is Venezuela's Ronda Rousey versus Ireland's Holly Holm. This fight looked very similar to the fight they had in 2015, which started the downfall of Rousey's MMA career. And just by looking at the damage on their faces, you already know who's going back to the WWE. Mexico's women fighters are a combined 5-1 and one at this point, but Pennington isn't going to be following that trend because Jermaine Durandamy exists. I Belize's Renault is taking on the USA's Juliana Pena in the last first round fight. I handpicked Pena for the USA in this division because evidently she's the only fighter that stands a chance against Amanda Nunez, but it's not looking like we'll ever get to that point considering the beating she was taking in this fight. But God put 10 pounds of muscle on that chin for a reason. She ended up taking everything Renault could give her, made it to a third round, took her down, and made her tap a minute 30 before she was going to lose this fight to a decision. The first semifinal fight is between Brazil's Amanda Nunez and Ireland's Holly home, and this fight was looking over just about as soon as it started. Nunez was tearing up her face and legs from the beginning of the fight. Holm never had an answer besides a few leg kicks of her own, but unsurprisingly, Amanda Nunez will be moving on to the finals after winning by technical knockout. Fighting Nunez for gold will either be Netherlands' Durandami or USA's Pena. Pena had a terrible performance in her last fight, but credit to her, she got straight to business, dominated the ground game, and won by armbar. That means for the bronze medal fight, we have Ireland's Holly Holm taking on the Netherlands' Durandami, and the fight almost looked pretty realistic considering Holmes just lost to Nunez by leg kicks. Holmes' legs were damaged early on in the fight, so Durandami just stuck with it the entire time and won Netherlands a bronze medal via a unanimous 30-26 to decision. And for the final women's fight of the Olympics, we have Brazil's Amanda Nunez, who is going to give her country the first medal with a gold or silver, going up against the USA's Juliana Pena, who is looking to put her country far ahead in the gold medal count with a win in this one. I really thought we had a chance considering how Pena's ground game has been looking, but let's be honest. This whole division was about who could win silver and bronze. She never stood a chance in this one and Nunez embarrassed her by taking her out with a triangle armbar. So Brazil goes to third place with their gold medal in this one. USA is back on top of the leaderboard since all they needed to do was win a silver. And the Netherlands are going to finish this video with a perfect one for one with the randomly winning them bronze. That's it for the women's side of things. It's now time for the flyweight men's division which is a six-man tournament. We are starting off with a classic Cold War matchup. This fight was mostly a rest 
wrestling match that Mighty Mouse was winning with his ground and pound, but in the very last seconds of the fight, he pulls off a Kimura that has Askarov tapping. It still went to a decision, but this fight was never in question. USA's Mighty Mouse will face Brazil's Pantoja in the semifinals. We have some rare breeds in our other quarterfinal fight. We have the Philippines' one and only John Dotson taking on New Zealand's one of two fighters in the Olympics, Kai Kara of France. But poor Tito Dotson, my man was getting cooked out there like a dobo for 15 minutes straight and lost by unanimous decision. First up in the semifinals, we have two MMA powerhouse countries going head to head with Brazil's Pantoja and USA's Mighty Mouse. Zarat had three takedowns in round one, but Pantoja landed a stunning head kick that won him back the round. In round two, Mighty Mouse took Pantoja down and kept him down to even up the fight. And round three is settled within this 10 second sequence. Mighty Mouse lands a stunning head kick of his own, but Pantoja quickly recovers, then stuns and drops the hamster. We go to another decision and Brazil's Pantoja pulled off the upset and will be heading to the finals for a chance to win Brazil back to back gold medals. In the other semifinal fight, we have a competitive matchup between Mexico's Moreno and New Zealand's Kaikara France. However, this fight ended up not being much of a competition. The former champ was pieced up in every way imaginable in this one, and the Kiwi will be facing the Brazilian in the flyweight finals. In the bronze medal fight between Moreno and Mighty Mouse, we had another uncompetitive fight. Mighty Mouse dominated Moreno with his takedowns. He was a wet blanket for 15 minutes straight and won this one over the wet backpack by unanimous decision. Honestly, the women's flyweight division has been more exciting to watch play out so far, but the gold medal fight between Brazil's Pantoja and New Zealand's Cara France made up for a lot of it. Cara France was doing damage with his cartwheel kicks, which he must have just unlocked. Pantoja was feeling a little silly too, so he went for a Superman punch that didn't work out so well for him. Afterwards, we have a new element added to the fight after they both damage each other's legs with checks. The Kiwi was still throwing bombs, but Pantoja woke up late in the second round. He stunned him with a head kick, walked him down, and dropped him with a combination. This fight is looking even entering the third round, but Car France pulls away again with a knockdown and ground control time. He makes it back up to the feet with 30 seconds left in the round, but his leg kick gets checked again and he's down bad. To make matters worse, he then gets stunned by a cartwheel kick and all the momentum he ever had in this fight is long gone. Pantoja fought valiantly in the fourth, but his leg health is really concerning. Still, he not only survives another round, but he also may have won it. So we make it to a fifth and final round. <laughs> Pantoja did his best, but the man from the cropped out land, Kai Kara France, wins three fights in a row to win gold, which will place New Zealand in fourth place, Brazil is in second with a gold and silver, and USA remains on top with a gold, silver, and bronze. We are now in the bantamweight division, which features the max number of fighters. Jamaica's Aljamain Sterling is facing Puerto Rico's second and last fighter, Rob Font. The underdog, Rob Font, came out looking like he could stand toe to toe with the former champ, but in the second round, he had no success going belly to belly. It's all even entering the third round and Aljamain strikes first with a stunning head kick but he also falls down which gives Font a lot of time to recover and Rob Font is robbed in this sequence he lands a spinning elbow that somehow doesn't do any damage he still lands a solid uppercut but he doesn't get the points for the stun or knockdown he still damages Sterling's leg in the round but that won't be enough and because of that he ends up losing this by split decision for the second time in a row Russia and the USA are matched up again Cejudo is probably the best wrestler in this division but Piotr Jan didn't allow him to fight his fight. Jan just beat up on the gold medalist for 12 minutes straight and is easily moving on to the semifinals after a knockout victory. Next up is a rematch that no one really wants to see. We have Ireland's Sean O'Malley facing Brazil's Pedro Munoz. Pedro came out looking like the sugar show after landing a spinning heel kick. It seemed like O'Malley was going to steal back the round with his knockdown, but Pedro returns the favor with 10 seconds left in the round. The second round was a head kicking battle that somehow Pedro was winning. We make it to a third round and out of the gates O'Malley drops Pedro with a question mark kick. He goes for the finish but it was all a ploy for him to go into the Brazilian's guard. O'Malley was very close to getting out of it but he ends up tapping out to the arm bar. In our last first round bantamweight fight we have Aljamain's fan club taking on China's Song Yadong. The fanboy turned this into a wrestling match early on but Yadong held his own in the first round. That was not the case for the second and in the third round Yadong was fortunate enough to land a stunning headshot before being laid on for two 
minutes straight. He gets back up with 30 seconds left in the round just to lean into a big knee, but the fight still goes the distance. And China's Song Yedong is moving on after pulling off the upset by split decision. For our first semifinal fight, we have Jamaica's Funk Master taking on Russia's No Mercy. Jan won the first round after landing the only big shot of the round. The second round was looking like Sterling's to lose after landing a stunning kick and takedowns, but Sterling chokes with time running out. He gets dropped hard and was just lucky enough to be saved by the bell. Sterling took another beating in the third and was once again just lucky enough to not be knocked out. And Piotr Jan is moving on to the finals while Aljamain Sterling is the first number one seed to not do so. The other semifinal fight features two underdogs who really aren't even supposed to be here with Brazil's Pedro and China's Yadong. And China will suffer their second loss in the Olympics so far in this one. Pedro somehow managed to knock around Yadong for the majority of the fight but never knocked him out. He won by unanimous decision and Brazil will be in the finals for the third time in a row. For the bronze medal fight, we have Jamaica Sterling taking on China's Yadong, and Sterling finally hit his stride in rounds one and two in this one. After earning a commanding lead in this fight, Sterling then goes out in round three and lays an egg. Apparently, the real Great Wall of China is Sterling's chin. He accepted his beating for the last five minutes of the fight, but he was still able to earn Jamaica, the third smallest country in population in the MMA Olympics, their first medal with a bronze. The final between Russia's Piotr Jan and Brazil's Pedro Munoz was looking like a competitive fight considering the god tier fighter Pedro apparently is inside this game. Pedro landed the first big shot of the fight, but Jan quickly came back with two knockdowns of his own in round one, which is a bad sign for Brazil. Jan scored another knockdown early in round two, but I think Pedro space jammed Sean O'Malley because he occasionally will start dominating exactly how he would in this fight. But the cold-hearted Piotr Jan came back in round two and finished the round with another knockdown and was on pace to win this fight if the bell didn't stop him. Pedro came out kicking in round three, but ends up going face first into a Jan knee. Jan probably could have won the fight here if he followed him down to the mat, but I don't think he's satisfied yet. And a minute into the third round, Piotr Jan knocks out Pedro with a combination. Herb Dean was in no rush to do his job, so he lands some more damage on his dead body. And Russia will be winning their first gold medal of the MMA Olympics, tying them with New Zealand in fourth place. All jokes aside, I poke Pedro made a great run earning Brazil their second silver in a row, along with Amanda's gold that currently has them in first place. Up next is the feather weight division there are a ton of well-known fighters in this tournament but it is definitely Volk's gold medal to lose and starting with Volk he will be taking on the first of three Swedish fighters in this competition Cub Swanson. Cub tried his best to stand and bang with the champ and was pretty creative with his strikes but nothing worked for him and Volk won the fight by unanimous decision. Up next we have a classic battle between the UK and Ireland with Arnold Allen and Conor McGregor. McGregor was bombs away from the start of the fight and stunned Allen with a beautiful combo. Allen then responded by sending a jumping kick at McGregor and McGregor responded. Back to his pack. Oh! Well, that was a lot easier than I expected it to be, and McGregor will face Volk in the semifinals. Next up is Mexico's Yair Rodriguez versus Georgia's last competitor, Ilya Taporia. Yair made it pretty clear early on that this wasn't going to be just some ordinary fight. Outside of Yair showing off some pretty sweet gymnastic capabilities, he actually did some solid damage to Taporia in the first round. In the second round, Taporia more than slowed down the fight by taking down Yair and keeping him down for four minutes straight. As soon as round three starts, Yair doesn't risk it. He immediately goes for damage, nails him with a spinning back fist and then knocks him out cold soon after. Meaning Mexico is alive once again and Georgia is finishing the Olympics with zero medals. Up last in the first round, we have the USA's Max Holloway taking on Brazil's Jose Aldo. Max ended Aldo's comeback once before and he did it again in this one. He almost had Aldo out of here in the first round, but he took his time dominating the fight and won by unanimous decision. Our first semifinal fight is between Australia's Volkanovski and Ireland's McGregor. McGregor came out hot in round one and landed a rolling thunder kick that did some damage. Volk catches McGregor with a stunning head kick, but McGregor responds with a few stunning punches, and I think McGregor just won a round on the champ. In round two, McGregor comes out doing some more wild shit, so Volk plays it safe, secures the takedown, and remains on top for the rest of the round. The fight is even, and McGregor comes out swinging once again in the opening seconds. He stuns the champ with the leather, but Volk plays some much-needed perfect defense against McGregor's follow-up kicks. A minute later, and McGregor gets the best of Volk again on the feet, and it's starting to look like a McGregor 
McGregor's fight to lose. But McGregor turns his back to Volk for a split second and he catches a kick to the back of the head. It's sad to say this, but Volk just stole that victory from him. Either way, for the first time yet, Australia will be in the finals and Ireland's last chance to win a medal will be in the bronze medal fight of this division. On the other side of the semifinals, we have a matchup between two of the top three countries in the medal rankings with USA's Max Holloway and Mexico's Yair Rodriguez. Yair came out feeling silly again, but Max dodged his rolling thunder kick and pieced him up. Late in the round, Yair was about to go airborne, but Max stunned him with a spinning back fist and then took his heart and soul by stunning him again with a cartwheel kick. In the second round, we get the opposite of what happened in the first when Max whiffed a spinning back fist and Yair stunned Max with a flying knee. Yair continued to dominate the first half of the round with his kicking abilities, but in the second half of the round, Max came back with two knockdowns in a row. So now entering the third, Max may be up two rounds to none. In the third round, Max landed the first stun of the round with a Superman punch. He goes back to it again, but this time Yair catches him with another cartwheel kick. With three minutes left in the fight, Yair catches Max again with a stunning uppercut and he relentlessly follows him to the fence. Between his spinning kick and punches, he drops Max to the canvas, gets on top of him, and finishes the fight with a knockout. Yair was about to lose that fight by split decision, but now he'll be giving Mexico the chance to leapfrog the USA and Brazil with a gold medal. The bronze medal fight between Max and Connor was an old fashioned brawl. They went back and forth, shortening each other's lifespans, but with 46 seconds left in the fight, Connor's chin couldn't take it anymore, and Max wins the USA another bronze. Meanwhile, Ireland is going to finish with zero medals between their three very skilled fighters. And in the gold medal fight, Volk has the opportunity to tie their little brother in gold medals with a win here, but also Yair is fighting for the chance to put Mexico all the way on top by being the only country to have two gold medals. This was looking like it was going to be a long, hard battle between Fundamentals versus Chaos, but the first big shot of the fight sends Volkanovski to the land down under. That is by far the quickest victory in a gold medal fight so far. That might even be the quickest finish of the entire video. I really did not see that coming, but Mexico's Yair Rodriguez joins Alexa Grasso on top of the podium, and that secures them first place on the leaderboard. USA adds another bronze medal to their collection, and they are in third place behind their neighbors from the south. And Australia is tied in six. They have four more fighters left in the Olympics, while New Zealand only has one more, so they'll still have plenty of more opportunities to not embarrass themselves. The lightweight division is loaded as usual, but has a pretty solid mix of ground fighters and stand-up fighters. Starting with the Russian champ, Islam just dominated Poland's Gamrot for 15 minutes straight with his takedowns and ground control and won the fight by unanimous decision. Up next is USA's Dustin Poirier versus New Zealand's last fighter, Daniel Hooker. I know Daniel Hooker is known for having one of the best chins in the organization, but when you Kamaru Usman yourself into a head kick, it doesn't matter very much. But on the top side of the bracket, Russia and USA will meet up for the third time so far to settle their differences once again. And in the lower side of the bracket, we have Mexico's Justin Gaethje facing Australia's Jake Matthews. Looking back at it, I'm not too sure why I included Jake Matthews other than him being Australian and in the game, but he's not going to disrupt things too much considering he was knocked out in the first round. Facing Gaethje in the semifinals will either be one of many Brazilians, Charles Oliveira, or Armenia's one and only Armand Sarukian. Both of these guys love the ground game, so it was a match made in heaven. Charles won the first round with his toss. Armand won the second with his takedown. Charles went for a takedown early in the third, but Armand got the best of him in this exchange and in the fight because Armand Surukian won by split decision and pulled off the upset in a fight that contained a combined 28 significant strikes. We've got a Cold War battle in the first semifinal fight, but it was less of a war and more of a small conflict. Poirier had the bright idea to accept this fight on the ground and go for a guillotine choke, which obviously isn't going to work against Islam, and Poirier ended up tapping out in the first round to a submission that doesn't even really look like a submission. And Dustin Poirier is a black belt. Something. Black belt? Who give him that? Russia has now won two of the three matchups against USA, and Islam is going to either give them a silver or another gold in the finals. In the other semifinal fight, we have two fighters with the exact opposite of game plans with Mexico's Gaethje and Armenia's Sarukian. Armand was looking to easily win the opening round with his ground game, but Gaethje didn't stay down too long and was able to do some damage on the feet before being held down for the last two minutes of the round. Gaethje clearly had enough of that, so he came out in the second swinging for the fences and landed a stunning kick and 
and knockdown that almost ended the fight. Armand then decided to test his luck against Gaethje on the feet, but the only luck he had was the fact that he made it to a third round. And about 40 seconds into the final round, Gaethje connected with a big knee that will send Mexico to the finals for the second time in a row. In the bronze medal fight is the USA's Poirier, who is looking to give his country their third bronze medal versus Sarukian, who is looking to give Armenia a bronze medal in their only attempt. Armand was going for the takedowns in the opening rounds and was having a pretty easy time doing so. In the third round, Armand drops Poirier with a big kick, but he doesn't want to wrestle anymore. That would just be too easy, I guess. So he lets him back up just to take him down again and finish him with an armbar. Armenia will be the smallest country in population to win a medal in the MMA Olympics, while Dustin Poirier will join Aaron Blanchfield and Henry Cejudo as the only Americans to not win a medal. Meanwhile, in the final, we have Islam, who is looking to make Russia the second country to have two gold medals, and Mexico's Gaethje, who is looking to set Mexico even further ahead in the gold medal count with three. Gaethje refuses to touch gloves because he already knows how this fight is going to go down. Islam takes him down in the first 20 seconds of the fight and doesn't let him back up for the rest of the round. But Gaethje peaks in the second round. He doesn't give Islam the chance to take him down. Instead, he knocks him down three separate times in the round, but he follows him to the mat and almost pays the price for doing so. Thankfully for Gaethje, the round ended before he was forced to submit. And in the third round, Islam was looking to clinch, but Gaethje was trying to keep his distance. He drops Islam with a Superman punch. He then drops him again with a flying knee, but he makes the risky decision to follow him to the mat. Except this time, he not only gets up, but knocks the champ out cold with a hook that shook the screen. Mexico is now the country to beat with three gold medals and a bronze. Russia still does a decent job pulling away from New Zealand with a gold and silver. Armenia is going to finish with their one and only bronze medal, but I'd say that's nothing to be ashamed of. Up next is the welterweight division, and we are starting off with Jamaica's second and last fighter, the champ Leon Edwards, versus Australia's fourth fighter so far, Della Maddalena. Maddalena is one of the fastest rising stars in the sport, but in this one, he did a ton of falling. Leon dominated him on the feet for 15 minutes straight and is moving on by unanimous decision. The next fight is an interesting clash of countries. We have Palestine's one and only Bilal Muhammad taking on China's third and last fighter, Li Jingliang. Li really surprised me with his power in the World Imperialism video I did where he took three final 10 opponents out in a row by knockout. But Bilal Muhammad is the king of decisions and he had a perfect game plan for the first two rounds. Li wasted no time to come out swinging in the third, but it was actually Bilal who earned the stun and knockdown. He then controlled a minute of the fight on the ground, but Lee was able to get back up in time just to bring great shame to his country. On the other side of the bracket, we have USA's Colby Covington facing Sweden's Hamzat Chemaev. Don't even bother asking me how the cum shot made weight for this one. The American won the first round with his takedown and ground and pound. Hamzat was looking to return the favor in the second, but we actually saw the first referee stand up since Carla Esparza in the strawweight division. But after being forced to get up, Hamzat promptly took him down again to win round two. In round three, we actually get a solid 30 seconds of stand-up fighting. Hamzat landed a few good punches, but Colby dropped him with a head kick and straight. He followed him to the mat, but Hamzat made the best of it and was landing heavy shots on the ground. We went to a decision and the USA is going to continue their cold streak with Hamzat winning by unanimous decision. Nigeria's Kamaru Usman versus Brazil's Gilbert Burns is a pretty stacked first round fight, but Usman wasn't having it. He won the takedown battle and ground and pound game the whole time and easily won this fight by decision. Up first in the semifinals, we have Jamaica's Leon Edwards taking on Palestine's Bilal Muhammad. Bilal tried his best to make this a slow grounded pound fight, but Leon Edwards was feeling a little Jewish today. He stuffed almost every takedown attempt thrown at him and continuously got the best of Bilal on the feet until he was able to knock Bilal out two minutes into the third round. Jamaica will be in the finals for the first time and so will one of these next two countries. We have a fight that a lot of fans wanted to see in real life, but let's be honest, it'll probably never happen. 20 seconds into the fight, Kamaru decided he wanted another wrestling match, but Hamzat ended up on top of his takedown and won himself the first round. In the next round, Hamzat did not do so well in the takedown defense department, so Kamaru won the second. Early in the third round, Hamzat landed a takedown on Kamaru, and it was looking like he'd come out on top of this fight, but after a failed submission attempt, Kamaru ended up with the top position and made the best of it, which ended up winning him the fight by unanimous decision. So in the bronze medal fight, we have a pair of great beards going chin to chin. I thought for sure we'd see another 15 minute wrestling match, but Bilal brought his gloves to this fight and ended up knocking out Hamzat in the second round, which will give Palestine a bronze medal in their only attempt, while Sweden will only have one more chance at winning anything. And in the gold medal fight, we have a very familiar matchup between Jamaica's Leon Edwards and Nigeria's Kamaru Usman. 
one. This is also the first time so far that the top two seeds have met in the finals in any male division. Leon has had great takedown defense throughout this tournament, but he didn't bring it when he needed it most. He went out there and let Kamaru bully him. To be fair, he did a good job fighting off some submission attempts throughout the fight, but in the fourth round, he gave Kamaru his back and went unconscious while Herb Dean was in no rush to pull him off. So after the welterweight division, Nigeria is perfect so far winning a gold medal in their first attempt and are tied for fifth place. Jamaica adds a silver to their bronze and they are respectfully in seventh place after both of their fighters in the Olympics finished with some hardware. And thanks to Bilal Muhammad winning bronze for Palestine, I will make much less AdSense money off this video. The middleweight division is up next and Nigeria has a very solid chance at going back to back. Israel Adesanya will have the opportunity to finish Sweden off with zero medals as he's taking on Hermansen for the first fight. And Izzy did just that. After fighting a flawless fight, he's moving on to the semifinals with a first round knockout. Up next, we have a tough first round matchup between Brazil's Alex Pereira and Italy's one and only Marvin Vittori. You'd expect Alex to have the knockout power in this matchup, but UFC 4 did his character so dirty. He is not at all like the fighter he is in real life. He's honestly a better wrestler than he is striker in this game. So Marvin Vittori is going to get an easy first round victory via knockout, and Brazil is now on a four fight losing streak after briefly being on top of the leaderboards. Up next, we have Australia's Robert Whitaker facing Mexico's Kelvin Gastelum. This was the first fight in this division to not end in knockout, but it wasn't for a lack of trying. Whitaker tore Gastelum up for 15 minutes straight and almost had him visiting Kobe multiple times throughout the fight, but his chin and brain held up. Still, Whitaker is advancing to the next round after an easy 30 to 27 decision victory. And for the last first round fight of the middleweight division, we have South Africa's one and only Drakus Duplessis facing USA's Jared Cannonier. Drakus is another fighter who needs to be fixed inside this game. Cannonier is a solid fighter in real life, but to not lose a single second of this fight is wild. He won a very lopsided fight by knockout in the second round and will face Whitaker in the semifinals. For our first semifinal fight, we have Izzy versus Vittori. Ironically, Vittori's last three losses were to the rest of the fighters in the semifinals, and the game was realistic for this one. Vittori was able to ragdoll Alex, but going up against Izzy, he didn't stand a chance, and he lost in the second round by knockout. So Nigeria will be in the finals for the second time in a row, while Italy still has a chance to win a bronze medal in their only attempt. And in the other semifinal matchup, Whitaker will be looking to put Australia ahead of New Zealand, while Cannoneer will be looking to move USA back up the leaderboard. Whitaker took some hard punches in the first round that had him stunned multiple times. He did show some signs of life with a minute left in the round, but for most of this fight, I'd describe him as lifeless. Ice Street. Oh! and Cannoneer will advance USA to the finals for the first time since the men's division started. First up in the bronze medal fight, we have Australia's Whitaker taking on Italy's Vittori. The first round could have gone either way considering both fighters landed a stunning strike on each other, but I'm starting to think Vittori might have had the Mafia give the UFC 4 developers a bribe because this man is a killer inside this game. Whitaker didn't stand a chance in the second round and Vittori had him out of here a minute and a half before the round ended. And in the final, we have Nigeria's Adesanya taking on a man who has a good chance of being Nigerian if he knew where his ancestors took a free cruise to America from. But instead, Cannoneer is representing USA in the finals for the first time since Juliana Pena. We had some black on black crime in the first round with Cannoneer landing a stunning shot early in the round and Izzy answering back with a stunning kick and knockdown with a Shoney Carter. In the second round, Cannoneer more or less lands a knockdown of his own with a punch to Izzy's groin. To be fair, it's Izzy's fault for giving him such a large target. Based on the melatonin in this octagon, I'm sure Izzy could have landed some payback on Cannoneers, but instead he fights clean, stuns him, and knocks him down with the Superman punch. Izzy tries to finish the fight, but Cannoneer gets back up just to be dropped immediately after. Just when this fight looks over, Cannoneer starts protecting himself and lays a big shot of his own that has Izzy stunned. But right after that great comeback, Izzy wakes up again and drops Cannoneer twice in a row. He then came inches away from decapitating Cannoneer with his spinning kick. But again, just as Cannoneer looks out of it, he starts to come back with some solid punches, but the Chinese are a different breed. But he's also gonna... Oh! 
So with the last two divisions being dominated by the Nigerians, they now have two gold medals and are in second place with only two fighters in the Olympics. Jared Cannonier still did a great job winning the USA Silver, and they are back on top of Brazil for the first time since the men's flyweight division. And Italy will finish one for one with Vittori coming in and taking out Pereira and Whitaker for bronze. Also at this point, the only countries that can catch up and beat Mexico in the standings are USA, Brazil, and Russia, as they are the only countries with a gold medal that also have a fighter in these last two divisions. And in the light heavyweight division, we are going to eliminate one of those contending countries immediately as USA's Jamal Hill will take on Brazil's Johnny Walker. Jamal Hill is the champ of this division, but you just never know what to expect when Johnny Walker's in the octagon. This fight started off as a back and forth battle, but Jamal Hill started to gain some distance on Walker in the second. And in the third round, we see something that I have never personally seen in UFC 4 when Johnny Walker was knocked down three times in a row but still managed to keep fighting. He even came back with a big flying elbow that dropped Hill. But by the end of the fight, Hill took care of business, knocked out Walker, evened up the score between the two countries, and also eliminated Brazil from winning the MMA Olympics. Poland is up for their fourth and last time while still looking for their first win. To be fair, they have faced some of the best countries there are to offer, but Jan has more than a decent chance against the UK's Paul Craig, whose country is still seeking a first medal of their own. This was an odd fight that didn't have too many highlights it went the distance and the decision went in favor of Paul Craig which was a little questionable I'd give him round three with a knockdown and ground control round one I would assume goes to Jan with a stun but Paul had a lot more volume and round two is dead even besides Jan having the leg stun so Poland might have been robbed of their last chance and best chance to win a medal but that's the way of the road up next is Russia's Ankalaev who has a tall task of keeping Russia in contention as he's taking on the world imperialism champ Austria's Rakic. Magomed landed the first stunning strike of the fight, but soon after, Rakic comes back with a knockdown kick that should win him the round. The second round was all Rakic from the start as he did some leg damage and brain damage. Magomed is the only one who lands a knockdown in the round, which gives him a chance to win round two, but still, that was a lopsided round for most of the five minutes. We make it to round three, and Magomed does some damage with his boxing, but Rakic has a deadly leg kick that has him wobbly. He follows that up with some dangerous combinations. He drops Magomed, but he falls for the trap of going to the Russian's guard, and Magomed does some pretty serious damage on the mat, and he was well on his way to winning this fight by an armbar before the fight ended. Rakic could have very well won this fight 30 to 27, but instead it's a split decision to none other than Magomed Ankalaev, and the Russians are still alive. Our final first round fight is between Chechia's one and only Yuri Prohaska and Mexico's last fighter of the Olympics, Dominic Reyes. Yuri is a wild and dangerous fighter and got the best of Reyes in the first round, but dear lord did the Mexican come out swinging in the second. He stunned Yuri four times and knocked him down three times in the second round alone, which is most likely a 10-8 round. We could be looking at a draw if Yuri comes out and wins this third and final round. I guess in this case I'd have a rematch or a coin flip, but Dominic Reyes has me covered. He finished off the upset with a knockout three minutes into the final round. First up in the semifinals, we have USA and the UK facing each other for the first time since Meatball Molly took care of Aaron Blanchfield, but the UK didn't get the best of the US this time. Paul Craig would have loved to get butt naked and wrestle in this fight, but the champ wasn't having it. Between his kicks and his work in the clinch, he is keeping the American dream alive and moving on to the finals. Facing USA in the gold medal fight is between Russia's Ankalaev and Mexico's Reyes. Russia is the only other country trying to match Mexico in gold medals by the end of this, but Dominic Reyes is a wild man. A couple minutes ago, I just said I have never seen three knockdowns in a row that didn't end with a knockout, but here we go again. And after doing doing that much damage in the first five minutes of the fight, Magomed really didn't stand a chance. He was never able to take this fight to the ground on his terms, so he and Russia were knocked out of this fight and contention of winning the Olympics. For the bronze medal fight, we have Russia's Ankalaya facing the UK's Paul Craig. To be honest, this was a good fight, but I'm more interested in the next gold medal fight, so I'm going to skim past it. They uh, beat each other up a fair amount. They did some wrestling here and there, did a little bit of this and that, and Ankalaya won by split decision. But in the final, we have the most important fight so far with a Jamal Hill victory that leaves John Jones with a chance to win the heavyweight division for the US, which would end up tying Mexico in golds and beating them by tiebreakers. But Mexico's Dominic Reyes has been looking dominant so far, and a win in this fight would give Mexico four gold medals and make them untouchable in the rankings. Not gonna lie, Hill had a rough first round. He got beat up, but he started to do some damage to Reyes's leg, and I like the investment. Still, the first round clearly goes to Reyes, and the second round was looking very familiar. Reyes stunned
stunned and dropped the champ in the early minutes, but Hill was able to slow the fight down midway through the round with a takedown. They get back up with time running out, but Reyes's kick is checked and he folds. Hill lets him back up just to smack his damage leg again, which drops him before time expires, and I like his chances to win this fight. Early in the third round, Hill is still going for his bad leg, and it's leading to even better strikes for Hill, but Reyes just seems like the much better kickboxer. He nails Hill with a head kick that almost stopped the fight, but he was too busy doing the salsa over his concussed body. Reyes stunned Hill again with a front kick, but Hill recovers and blasts away at his leg again, which leaves him on the mat. And by the end of the round, Reyes was seconds away from winning this fight and the Olympics for Mexico with an arm bar. We somehow make it to a fourth round and Reyes continues to dominate Hill on the feet, but Hill is still breathing. Hill finally comes back and stuns Reyes with a front kick and ends up landing some solid knees in the clinch. With three minutes to go in the fourth, Hill lands another leg kick that should have stopped the fight considering how that thing was looking, but not to worry. The next one gets him again and Reyes has had enough. Hill perseveres and wins a much needed gold medal for USA. Reyes was Mexico's last fighter of the Olympics and surprised me by making it this far and Mexico is going to finish the Olympics with three golds, one silver, and one bronze. Russia has one of every category and is doing well for themselves in fifth place, but it is all up to the USA and John Jones now. They have two golds and two silvers, so a John Jones sweep would put them all the way on top of the leaderboard when it's all said and done. And starting with the man that has 330 million people on his shoulders, USA's John Jones is up first and will be taking on Australia's tie to Ivasa. John's head movement was looking promising at the early moments of this fight, but tied to Ivasa's takedown defense is looking even scarier. John still took him down later in the round, but the fact that he was able to stuff him even once is not a good sign. We make it to the second round and Ty's defense is still holding strong after he blocks two back-to-back -back jumping head kicks. Later in the round, John's head movement is a little too good and he ends up getting caught by some big punches that gives Ty the first stunning shot of the fight. All of a sudden, Ty's looking like a 300-pound ninja. He dodges John, they clinch, but Ty gets out of it, drops him with an elbow, he follows him to the mat, which I'm low-key thinking is a good thing for John, but no, he just sits there and eats punch after punch until he is knocked out. And John fucking Jones just pissed away America's last chance at winning the MMA Olympics. That is the worst performance of any champ in the entire Olympics. Sterling was the only one to not make the gold medal fight, which I thought was bad, but here's the GOAT losing in the first round. And the punch that took him out didn't even land. You can see his eyes open at the end. For the love of God, if you're gonna take a bribe for a couple barrels of coke, you can at least put on a good performance. Up next, we have Francis Cyril gone facing the UK's Tom Aspinall. This should have been a competitive fight, but Tom wasn't up for it. Tom landed one takedown and finished the fight soon after with a submission and will be facing none other than Ty Tuivasa in the semifinals. The third fight of the first round is between Russia's Pavlovich and Croatia's Miokic. Sergei is a lot like Alex Pereira in this game. He should be a knockout artist. Instead, he fights like Khabib. And apparently, I should have had Miokic represent the USA heavyweights because he dominated Sergey on the feet and ended up winning by submission. And for our last fight of the first round, we have Cameroon's Francis Ngannou facing Brazil's Junior Dos Santos. I actually really like this fight because we all know Francis is a cheat code in this game, but JDS is one of the most powerful strikers in the game. Francis had the first stun of the fight with some light jabs, which is ridiculous. But JDS answered back with a stunning straight and overhand that won him round one. Round two was wild. They went back and forth, exchanging two knockdowns each on each other. But Francis got the best of JDS in this round by delivering two more knockdowns and how JDS survived this final one is beyond me. We actually made it to round three and right after the glove touch JDS stuns Nganu. About 20 seconds later Francis comes back with a knockdown and keep in mind we're still in the first minute of this round and here's JDS once again not only stunning Francis but also dropping him. Just a few seconds later JDS drops him again with a knee to the dome and he takes a fight to the ground which I love for him. Just get the safe victory and get out out of here, but JDS willingly lets him back up just to get dropped immediately. Francis learned his lesson. He isn't going down there again. He lets him up. JDS starts swinging at air, and Francis comes back with a left to knock out the last Brazilian standing. This division has been wild. We were seconds away from having four underdogs making these semifinals, but I'll settle for three. Should have been Jones, though. First up in these semifinals, we have two fighters with opposite styles going head-to-head -head between Australia's Tai Tuivasa and the UK's Tom Aspinall. Before Tai could get anything too crazy going on the feet. Tom took him down twice in the first round. In the second round, that John Jones kryptonite came out again when Ty checked the kick and stunned Tom right after. We're in the third
third round and just when you think Ty is getting too wild he pulls himself together to check another kick that damages Tom's leg. Tom does come back and drop Ty with an overhand and straight but it's a dangerous game to stand and bang with this kangaroo. Still Tom has him stunned again. Ty is out on the feet but still this man checks a fucking leg kick that lets him recover and ride out this fight until they go to a decision. And the Ty to Ivasa train is gonna keep on rolling. He wins by unanimous decision. Meanwhile the UK will have one last 50 50 shot to win a single medal between their five fighters and up next in the other semi-final we have cameroons and ganu facing croatia's miokic i was fully expecting a knockout in this fight just like any time francis steps into the octagon but i did not think it would come like this That means poor old Tom Aspinall has to fight Francis Ngannou just to give his country their first bronze medal. And let me tell you, that was a tall order for little Tommy. But in our final gold medal fight, we have what should be a more competitive bout between Croatia's one and only Stipe Miocic versus the newly and greatly improved Tai Tuivasa, who is looking to give Australia their first gold medal to move them up the rankings, more specifically above New Zealand. And I don't even know what to say. This was the last person I was expecting to win the gold medal in this division. But what a way to finish the MMA Olympics. I don't think Ty was even hurt. The only blood he ever had on him was Stipe's. At least I don't feel as bad about John Jones getting knocked out by him because apparently Ty Tuivas is the greatest heavyweight of all time. And the big fat goat goes 3-0 after knocking out Stipe Miocic in the second round. Here's a look at the final medal count. Mexico finished on top thanks to Ty Tuivasa. They had Grasso, Yair, and Gaethje win gold for them and had a total of five medals. USA finished second overall but won the most medals with six of all the fighters from the states it was rose and hill who won them gold nigeria went a perfect six and oh in the olympics and with just kamaru and izzy they finished in third brazil really didn't make too much noise in this but amanda nunez carried the nation to fourth place with her gold medal russia did pretty well for themselves winning three medals between their five fighters surprisingly islam didn't win gold but pure Tuyan did in sixth place we have the aussies who passed new zealand thanks to the hands of steel and belly full of beer that is tied to ivasa new zealand still did a great job with only two fighters car of france was still able to win them a gold medal jamaica is in eighth but went two for two with aljo winning bronze and leon winning gold i saw that some olympic ranking systems like to include medals one per population and gdp and jamaica is first in both categories so they did some solid work considering where their fighters come from from there we've got china kyrgyzstan and croatia who are tied for ninth place with a silver medal and the rest of the bronze medal countries are tied for 12th the biggest loser is the uk they came in with five fighters but finished with no hardware. To be fair, they had three fighters who ended up losing in bronze medal fights. Poland came in with four fighters and never made it past the first round, but they had a really tough schedule facing fighters like Andrade, Shevchenko, and Islam. Jan lost to Paul Craig, so no excuses there. That's on him. I'm no Dana White, but I really believe this could be pulled off if the heads of the organizations really wanted to, and let's be honest, if there was something worthwhile that could benefit them from it. But I think one of the big positive impacts that would come from MMA being in the Olympics is not only popularity to the sport in general, General, but also to the less known organizations. If some guy from the PFL comes in and beats a guy from the UFC, that's going to bring a ton of eyes to that fighter and the PFL. On the flip side, if UFC fighters come in and dominate every weight class, that will just bring a ton of new consumers to their organization and fighters. I have little to no power at the moment when it comes to making this actually happen, but you never know. If this video blows up, the right people get this recommended to them and they see a ton of support behind the idea, maybe, just maybe, we could butterfly a affect this bitch into actually happening. So let me know what you guys think. Would you like to see MMA in the Olympics? Let me know your ideas on how you would make it happen. And for the more negative thinking people, feel free to tell me why it would never work. I want to hear it all. I genuinely want to know what you guys have to say about this topic. But that'll do it. This has got to be the longest video I have ever made. So if you're still here, mwah, hope that lands on your forehead. Thank you guys for watching. Much love and I will see you in the next one.